so excited to be wrapping up Black Cat today. It's going to be fun. So um, for anyone who's on my email list, you guys know that I um, have been a little bit behind on some of my uh, artwork just because I've been working on other things and getting my, my stuff organized. Um, so I haven't worked on this a ton since the last stream. I did finish inking and then this morning I had a few minutes before we were taking the kids to the uh, embassy to renew their passports. So I quickly did a little work on the cats, but um, time to get some more work done. Yay, I'm so excited. Devin is here. Hello, Devin. Hi. I'm so glad you could make it to the stream. Um, all right, so these are what are called Bastet cats and the um, inspiration for doing the stuff that she has mostly these cats is um, from my son he's eight years old and he is extremely into a computer game called Roblox R-O-B-L-O-X I believe and they have a um, a thing in there where uh, you rob a museum. And so I think the robbing a museum was sort of in the back of my mind when I started working on the sketch for this one. And that's why I've done a more museum-y theme with the Egyptian cats. And they're black, so it works. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gabriel. All right, so um, they are called Bastet cats, B-A-S-T-E-T. -E and I'm just gonna have a, um, Google image search of them so that I make sure I'm coloring them correctly. They have big thick gold or at least generally a lot of them have big thick gold Egyptian style um, necklace thingies going on. And so what I'm going to do with those is I'm probably going to color it black and then I will um, use my trusty gold uh, jelly roll pen to uh, make them all shiny and give them their detail. Uh, their eyes are also, um, their eyes are also done with the Egyptian eyeliner style in gold as well, or at least many versions of them. And so I'll do them with that. Reminds you of the old Batman 66. Oh, cool. And hi, Wayne. All right. So I will, uh, just get going. Um, for Anything that's kind of a flat gray or black, I don't need it to have a blue or a brown undertone. I use the toner grays by Copic Markers. And for this entire thing, I will be coloring it with Copic Marker, probably mixing um, a few like a random colored pencil. But for the most part, I color with Copic Markers. Hello, Robert. <laughs> Donnie Mac, that's hilarious. Okay, so <clears throat> what I'm doing right now is working on the cats. Um, after I'm done with the cats, I'm gonna work on her suit a little bit more just to do a bit more blending and soften it out a tiny bit. Kylie's here and River Dragon is here. That's Andrew, right? Or is that, no, Dragon Coda is Andrew. Now I'm confused again. That is very weird. You know, I, um, when my, Twitch first popped up, I had an ad. So maybe that's why you guys uh, <laughs> didn't see everything is because I also had to deal with waiting for an ad to finish. <laughs> All right, so I already put in some T7 for the shadows and I did my usual where I shaded the cat in with pencil and I'll go over it with a darker marker and work to light. All right, and then um, what she's sitting on is just a bunch of plain um, white diamonds. And then I have a few pink diamonds here thrown about. And then I've got some um, gold coins, pearl necklaces. And then I would kind of like to have pink be the other color. There's going to be some gold, mostly blues and grays. And then the... Um, I want a pink background as well, and then pink diamonds to match her lipstick, because I'm being very girly about this. <laughs> David's here. Van Rafan is here. <laughs> no, Van Rafan. Kevin, hi. <laughs> and 
And hey, Mike. <laughs> I'm sorry that I, I'm still a little confused with everyone's names. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> Gold collars for the cats, yes, I'm going to do those with gray, uh, I mean with uh, gold um, metallic pen. So I'm going to put black down first and then go over it with gold. Hey, Payback! Okay, so um, I have my, t my toner markers here on my side, and I also, as usual, have my dab pad here, and I always um, do a little tap on this and dab off any excess marker that may be pooling in the nib. So that's what my, um, my dab pads are for. There are a lot of names and they're new names. So like I know everybody's names from Facebook or Instagram and now I need to learn a whole new set and I'm so bad at names. I'll tell you guys right off the bat, I suck. So I'm trying but sometimes I, I screw it up and I apologize. <laughs> oh, hello, Geo. Okay, so right now I'm gonna be using like the lower toner marker colors, T5, T3. I'm gonna try to skip, um, to skip some. So like do one, three, five, seven, as opposed to running the whole gamut. Cause honestly, even though my hands are not exactly small, it's still a lot of markers to hold. And um, I used cool gray for her hair and all the, the white fur trim. I haven't done the fur trim on her arm yet. Uh, the fur trim on this side I just left out because I don't really think we would see it because of the direction of her hand. Oh, thank you so much, Payback. Yes, exactly, Van. They do leak, and that's why a dab pad is literally a must. So um, I'm using, they're a really, really nice, basically a paper towel. There's some napkins I swiped. Um, and um, yeah, I'm trying to find more because <laughs> they're, they're the absolute best. I've, I've tried like the, the little cotton rounds, like the flat ones, not the actual cotton puff balls. And those ones, they do get a little bit of lint on your marker and you don't want that either. So it's kind of a mix between the two. Ooh, I'm gonna take a look at this thing from Wayne. Hi, Mike. I'm trying to find, oh yeah, so she has one of the cats as well and it's a gold one. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, there's a few more. True, she has it too. Oh well, <laughs> I guess I'm doing a Marvel character with it. <laughs> hey Anthony. All right, so I'm using T5 right now. Let's get some music going. Oh, wait. Now the music is playing on mine. Sorry. I don't know if everyone can hear the music. It was, it just started playing out of my speakers. <laughs> Okay, everyone. All right, so let's do T3 here. Yay, I'm so glad you liked the tea set, uh, Van. 
They are really, really amazing. Um, I Before I used to use the neutral set, which I, I have a hard time telling what's the difference between the neutral and the toner. Um, but to me, the neutral ones did seem to have a slightly more of a blue undertone than the toner ones. The, the toner set, to me, seems to be the truest flat gray. And I'm, I'm not making these cats as um, latex shiny as, cat, as Black Cat is herself. So her suit, I'm trying to give more of the impression as it is real shiny, slick latex. The, um, the cats, I'm, I'm just trying to allude to their having a little bit more texture, if that makes sense. So they don't have like the real extreme contrast that her suit does. It'll also help her pop more, considering the fact that they're all kind of sharing the black space. Oh, I'm glad most of the cleanup is done, Mike. All right, so I used T toner two for a minute and now I'm switching to three again. It was just a little dark for some places. Oh my God, I can only imagine how hot and uncomfortable it is to wear latex. I have uh, never tried and don't plan to. <laughs> it uh, seems very hot, uncomfortable, sticky, and you know, I've read how you need to like cover your body in, um, in talcum powder in order to like get the suit on. Oh, whew. I don't like really, really tight clothes. <laughs> hey, Louie. Oh, um, then for the hair, I use the cool grays, so they have a bit more of a blue undertone. Oh, thank you so much, friend. I really appreciate it. And I'm leaving the eyes white for right now. That is not the plan for the color I want them to be. I'm still deciding what color I'm gonna make the, um, their eyes. All right. And then now I'm gonna go back in with T7 and just darken up a couple of the places that I want to be uh, darker. And then in some of these spots, like down here on the stomach of the cat and stuff, I use T9, so it's like the second to darkest. Yes, I'm gonna be uh, at Fan Expo on Thursday. I'm taking the red eye from Calgary to Toronto, so I'll be arriving at 6 a.m. I'll make it to the, to the show and be all set up. But you see, there is one advantage that I have with flying. I hate flying but I can sleep on the plane no problem. As soon as they close the doors and the cabin's pressurized, I'm out. <laughs> I don't know what it is with the air pressure, but it puts me to sleep. 
Oh, thank you so much, Steve. And Kylie, the sapphires is a really great idea. That's the part that I'm I'm waiting on because I'm trying to decide right now if they're going to be too much because this is kind of the same case as it was with a with another commission I did of Deja Thoris years ago where she had some of the um, oh god I can't remember the name of the the uh, the Martian cat style animals that she had next to her but anyway those ones um their eyes when they were open they detracted from her so i'm i don't want the 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 cats to be more than kind of a background filler if i go too far into making them stand out then what's going to happen is it's she's not going to stand out enough if that makes sense yeah <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> She's sitting on her hoard. Okay, I need to darken up this one little spot. There we go. Alright, now I'm going to move on to the next cat. So um, all the parts that I've shaded with my pencil are what I intend to be the darkest parts of the cat. Oh, you are so amazing. Thank you so very, very much. <laughs> You're awesome, Wayne. Hello, Jason. Jason, I have not forgotten about you. Your um, mailing out your stuff is literally the next thing on my to-do list. <laughs> I'm so sorry about the delay. Much, Mr. Wheeze. <laughs> Hello, Lino. This last cat looks like a skinny Sherlock. Oh. <laughs> oh my god, I got such a great picture of Sherlock today. I'm gonna post it later. He looks so very fat. Mr. Weeze, it is very awesome, I'm not gonna lie. I feel extremely fortunate. 
and also that I get to work from home um, and take care of my kids because I'm a mom of three so it definitely has made my life just ten times easier <clears throat> to be able to be home for them that's for sure oh you saw that one <laughs> yeah Sherlock and the Twizzler that's right <laughs> <clears throat> oh, thank you, Lino. All right, so now I'm just trying to work around all the little diamonds. So the way that I inked the diamonds is I used a cool gray um, Copic multi-liner pen, and I I just kind of inked a little little rough scratchy lines I mean you know if you looked at it and we're and we're being critical of my work you could say it looks kind of like she's sitting on a pile of cornflakes <laughs> because of how I inked it I tried to give it that texture to allude to diamonds without drawing just millions of little tiny diamonds that would have just been insane um, so it's more of just kind of giving the basic outline of texture for sharp edges and then I'll go in and Put some darker areas. I'm gonna use some colored pencil to make it look like they're shining. Uh, at least that's that's the plan and where I'm going. And it's nice to have the diamonds up against a darker surface like this because then when I do use a white colored pencil, it'll it'll pop. You know, you put white colored pencil on white paper, you see nothing, right? But on something like this, where it's the cat is darker or her suit is darker, any little shines that I want to give from the diamonds reflect, ref, reflecting or refracting the light around, it'll actually show up. So that's also one of the reasons why I plan to give a soft pink background um, to help there be some kind of color there for me to show the shine of her diamond bracelet or you know all those little things <laughs> corn flakes are good <laughs> oh thank you so much the tea monster and thank you for S sk Froy for um introducing me to you i appreciate that Yes, that's what I plan to do, Kylie, especially, well, mostly on this cat down here because he's right in the diamonds. Ugh, I'm drying out my marker because I keep stopping to talk. Yeah, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do that either, Kylie, but you know, we'll figure it out. <laughs> More winging it. Hey, Scott, welcome to the stream. I'm glad you could make it. Oh, <laughs> sorry, Gabriel. So I just looked up Egyptian artifacts for their different necklaces and um, I found this, it was like a, it was just a standalone e Egyptian um, pendant that I saw from some museum, from an architectural dig, and um, I'm not architectural, <laughs> uh, whatever the word is, archaeological dig. And so that's what I, um, I decided to do here. So it's some real um, pendant 
that they found and so I thought that would be perfect to put on one of the cats so that's what I used and then here I did an ankh and then here I just did the the typical Egyptian eye of Horus oh thank you Louie Oh, that is so awesome, the Team Monster. Thank you. I'll definitely have to check that out, too. <laughs> Thank you, Kylie. All right, so now I've switched from T7 to T5 because um, I'm just blending it out a little bit more. Now, it looks like the T5... It is not quite as empty a marker, so it's uh, too close in color. So I'm going to grab the T4. Again, anyone who uses Copic markers, get yourself some kind of dab pad. Believe me, I have saved many a commission that was like doomed to failure if I hadn't had that dab pad. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Hello, Hans, welcome. I'm glad you could make it. All right, so I'm using T4. It's a slightly bigger jump from the seven, but um, if I need to do any blending back into the seven, that's pretty easy to do. Um, and at least it's a, it's a lighter color and I'm not wasting marker and wasting time by just going over something with a marker that's too close. So the way that I've blended on these cats is smoother than how I've done it on cat, Black Cat, her suit. But I will be going back onto Black Cat and blending her just, just a touch more. Hello, Mary Pippins, or Pimpins. <laughs> Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, SK Froy, for hosting me. All right, so even though I really only intensely darkened under the cat's chin, um, which is something I never see on my cat, uh, I, it is still going to be shaded in all the way up quite a bit more. So I'm using T4 still. So it's the Copic marker toner gray number four. Now I'm going to go to T Toner 2. How far am I away from accepting new commissions? I am very, very far away, Payback IV, because most of the ones that I have currently are 11 by 17s. I don't get to have the time to do very many of those. But I am scheduling them in. I am going to try to start really plowing through. <laughs> 3048. <laughs> nice, Anthony. Oh, thank you, Wayne. That's that's really good to hear. Thank you so much. Uh, I will try to not ruin that and keep the the difference in the textures, which is definitely something I was I was trying to accomplish. That hers is more of the real liquid shiny slick latex and they have a bit more texture which is why they don't catch the light quite as like brilliantly as she does so that's what i was trying to do um there's just a couple spots i want to blend just a little tiny tiny bit better but you know sometimes if it ain't broke don't fix it and i tend to over fix stuff to where i break it so <laughs> i will um i will see how far or if i should touch it at all Okay, I'm switching to T3 to just blend these two colors together a little bit better. So I'm just going to be uh, jumping between a couple of the toner colors just to get this one part on the cap. <laughs> Yay! Thank you, 
Gary, Fran, <laughs> and thank you, Wayne. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, I won't touch her suit. I shall attempt to restrain myself. T4 and kind of going over the entire cheek but lifting as I go up towards the highlight area so that it does a smooth coat um, without me having to do any more uh, re-blending. Now I'm using T3. So I'm jumping between a bunch of different markers but hopefully you guys get the idea that you know with with Copic blending you kind of just have to keep going in between a few different ones to get that smooth blend. <laughs> her hair is colored, Hans. I think it's just so light you can't see it, but here's her hair. Are you ready? Thank you for the host, Louie. and I'm just going back over a few places um, to get it a little bit darker because I do want that nice contrast and when you go over a darker marker with a lighter one it lightens it just a just a tiny bit or it kind of takes away from that pure crisp color so um, I usually go back in and just add in a touch more of that really nice, crisp, dark tone that I had. Darker pink to nod to her ties to Spider-Man. Uh, yeah, I can, I can definitely give it a shot. How dark pink are you talking, though? Or I guess I can look it up. Okay. So, the cats are done. Woot! Yes, I'm gonna put pink in the background. I have a range of uh, pinks that I have in mind. Let me get my uh, hex chart so I can show you guys which pink I have in mind. Okay, here we go. This is the range of pink that I would like to do. It's in this, this basic range. It's not extremely fuchsia um, colors, but just in this, this particular range. <laughs> I'm sure the cats are probably quite tired of being stolen all the time. <laughs> but that's what they get for being super valuable. So it's like they can they can feel fancy, but then, you know, they have to deal with some some shit. <laughs> all right. So here's my very fancy not um way that I store my Copic markers. <laughs> All right, um, so I am going to do the typical Egyptian necklace style thing here with the, um, with the way that I do their, um, the coloring of their necklaces and the detailing on their necklaces. So I, they're kind of handled in rings. And so I will be making some of the rings colored and then I have, um, 
jelly roll pens that I'll use to add in some detail and um, gold. So yeah, so this is like a gold metallic uh, jelly roll pen and that will put in all of the detail on the cats, which is gonna be so nice. Like, let me try right here and see how dark. Oh my God, that's awesome. See? So then you have a really nice pop of metallic gold on the eyes. Let me see if it shows up on the screen. Okay, you can't super duper see it, but it's metallic gold on the eyes. So you know what? I think I'm just gonna make their eyes black. <laughs> My new traveling case. I don't think that was me. I think that that was William. Oh, hi, Tannis. Okay, here we go. Well, you, you just need to print it. Um, that's what I did. I just uh, took it to a local printer and I had them print it. I had them print it on the paper I actually draw on um, because I get my paper from my printer. Um, for any other place, just have them print it on some cardstock so that, you know, it takes the, the, car, the marker the way that a Bristol board would, for instance. Oh yeah, I have so many van, it's, it's intense. <laughs> Look. And then I have these other ones that are called glaze pens so you can use glaze ones which work really nicely they're made for like going on glass and stuff but what i did is if i wanted a slightly lighter color than one of these sparkly ones that i have i would put white put white jelly roll down first and then put the glaze on top of the white jelly roll and then it pops because the glazes think of it kind of yeah like a glaze it's basically colored varnish tinted varnish so you want to have that white down first if you want it to be opaque. Oh, <laughs> you know what? That's a that's a good question, you know. And I have a sharpie right here. Let's let's try. Okay. Mm, it's not quite the same color, but yeah, it does kind of work. <laughs> Yeah, you could print it on the Copic paper. That's a good idea. Oh, seriously? Okay, Van, I don't know. I What I did, <laughs> I don't think I spent that much on them. I got the sets. I, I waited until Michael's had a 50% off coupon, and I got them all with a 50% off coupon because I bought big old packs of them. <laughs> Yeah, they really aren't. They've got kind of like a blue undertone. Oh, it does? Oh, that's good. Yes, I got stains on my gloves. I ruined them. They are ruined. All right, so I am going to fill in the eyes once I have some, um, some of the outline of the eye done because I don't want to lose that eye color. There we go. So I'll do that at the end. This feels kind of very fat. Like the lines are not very thin. But anyway, this is just going to be for fun. So I saw on some of the statues they did like little horizontal lines in the ears other eye done. where I am they they actually do have some packs so I bought them as 
hacks. Oh, thank you, Juan Solo. Thank you, Kara. I did finish the hair ornaments, Lino. I just, uh, I haven't used them yet. I'm saving them for convention stuff. Not really something I would wear at home. But I'll post a picture of them on Instagram so you, and sh explain how I made them. <laughs> So this doesn't really show up probably for you guys in the light, but um, they are very, very shiny metallic, which is awesome. Okay, see you later, Kara. Love you, hun. All right, so what I would like to do with the, um, the necklaces on the cats is, firstly, I need to just ink the lines on this one. Oh, uh, Van, the only reason why I don't use Bristol board is because I have another type of paper that I really like and I'm extremely attached to, um, and it's called Cougar Super Smooth. So not Cougar Smooth, it has to be super smooth, and I'm very picky about that fact. Now, that's just me, right? Um, but they, you can find it in North America. There are a lot of printers that carry it. If they don't have it, um, you can ask them to order it. Generally, if I can find it here in Calgary, you can find it anywhere else in North America. Um, I believe it's it's milled and made in North America, so I don't think that they sell it overseas as far as I'm aware, um, but I know you can get it here in the States. And that's my favorite paper right now. I use a hundred pound cover. <laughs> yes, we did, a drive-by Kara. <laughs> I will be working on testing um, some paper that can be gotten overseas to try to find something comparable so that I can tell you guys where, what to get. Especially for Kara. I mean, not Kara, Kylie. <laughs> Hi, Wendy. All right, so I'm just gonna erase this and it's just to break up the line because I'm gonna do some colors now um, for those of you who are new to my work I work on a series I do the interiors and a lot of the covers for a series called Divinica and it's all about uh, goddesses from different pantheons of mythology and I use um, and I recently did one well last year uh, for the goddess Isis so I have a lot of uh, time put in on Egyptian style colors, meaning that I do basically know which colors I wanna use for their necklaces, which, you know, saves me a few hours of figuring that out. <laughs> so, Peacock Blue is a very good one. It's B06, it's like a really good um, turquoisey blue for uh, this kind of stuff. And then there is G43 and YG03, I think. I'm gonna just check my hex chart real quick. The Bloodshot comic is gonna have a glass cover. No, I've never heard of a glass cover. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, consistency, woot! All right, so YG03. All right, so I'm just checking my greens to see which ones I used. G24.
think G24 was what I used. Um, <clears throat> and then there's BG49. There's duck blue. Oh, okay, so there's duck blue and peacock blue, and I got them confused. <laughs> okay, B06. Yeah, I think I used duck blue, not peacock blue. <laughs> uh, printing on the back or front of shirts. Well, I'd probably wear it here on Twitch, so it should be on the front. Thank you, Kylie. All right, just giving it a little check for making sure I'm consistent on these colors. Yeah, so the blue is very much Actually, I think it's more of a peacock blue. All right, so I was right at the beginning. So sweet of you, Kylie. Thank you, love. All right, and as always, dab pad. So these are just going to be little accent colors. I don't want to go too far and too crazy on any of this stuff because then it's just going to be like, you know, rainbow attack for a uh, cover, which is a little bit um, <clears throat> intense when she personally doesn't have that much color on her. So I don't want these um, bastets to... Um, kind of compete with her in any way. I'll make the um, the ank gold as well. Thank you, Adam. All right. And it's going to be nice that it's a it's a very deep blue because then the gold will really show up. Yay! in a teeny bit more. That's hilarious, Juan Solo.
going outside the lines a little bit for like some beading detail, just for fun. Oh my God, that's so not true, Hans. <laughs> from carrying all the Copic markers in all of my boxes. <laughs> the spot with the blue there we go so my gold colors that I like to use are that pale no is it pale sepia no pumpkin yellow all right now I'm all confused it's been a minute since I've done any uh, coloring so wow all right, so YR24 is what I'm gonna use. It's pale sepia. To me, it looks like pumpkin spice. Oh, thank you, Mr. Wheeze. So this is the same color I'll use for the gold coins and everything so that it's um, all consistent. And then I use some of the darker browns or um, tans for the, um, the shading and the shadowing in the gold color. The cats cost a fortune. <laughs> yes, I want to do the cat base gold. So I'm using a hazelnut, it's E23, for the darker parts. And then I'll do some pops of white with the white jelly roll for where it's catching the light. Levi is here, hi Levi. Uh, no, I said um, YR24 and E23. And usually I do start with YR31 as like the lighter color, but I kind of forgot. <laughs> it's been a minute since I've colored with Copic marker. And if I haven't done something um, in a while, I'll start to forget what colors I use. So usually if I'm like in the middle of a commission and I need to stop, I'll actually take a picture of whatever it was I was using so that I don't forget and start using the wrong color. Yeah, professionally winging it. <laughs> That's right. Hey, Tom. All right, so let's do the gold base now. I'm gonna start with YR31, uh, which I forgot to do last time. Okay. 
And where I take the YR31 to white, where I want some parts to be white, it's YR30 that I use. Right now I'm just blending the, um, these two colors, YR30 and YR31. Ooh, fun! Have a good one, Scott! The Sherlock Hidden Kitty Easter Egg. I didn't put Sherlock in this one because he's the wrong kind of cat. He, his nose is too short and he's a little bit too much on the chubby side. <laughs> he doesn't make the, the proper cat. And at the beginning when I was sketching them, I was, um, I'm sure I was a little too Sherlock inspired and um, they looked so wrong because Sherlock is just too cute looking. He looks like a giant kitten. And yeah, he's just full of fluff and chub, and he, he's the wrong kind of cat. So as soon as I actually looked up this cat and, and studied them, yeah, they're long, lean, pointy noses. It's like everything completely polar opposite from Sherlock. <laughs> Sherlock is doing really good with the toothbrushing, though. It's really quite amazing. Yeah, more Siamese, that's true. Oh my god, that is my favorite song. We are Siamese, if you please. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> we are Siamese, if you don't please. And then I don't know the rest of the words. Oh my god, that's awesome. Do you guys like them, Tom? Yeah. <laughs> 
his name was Miko. That's great. Like the raccoon, yeah. <laughs> I sing well, that was terrible. But thank you, Lino. I definitely do not like karaoke night. Beyonce loves them, yay! It is? Well, that's awesome, yay! It's Andromeda by Approaching Nirvana. You love them all, that's awesome. <laughs> War paint is her favorite, yes. <laughs> that one was so good. I'm so glad she liked them, that's awesome. You know how it is when you recommend something and then it, it like, the, then the nervousness sets in of like, okay, are they gonna like it? Are they not gonna like it? So I'm so glad she likes them. <laughs> oh, see you later, Anthony. All right, I'm gonna check that in one second, Kylie. Make sure that's right. And I'm so glad you're liking the gold so far, yay. All right, so the gold, the colors that I generally use for gold. Yes, that's correct. Okay, are you ready? YR30, YR31, YR24, and H23, which I haven't used yet here, but I, I may at the end. <laughs> See you later, Anthony. All right, so now I'm gonna to switch to E23. Again, always have a dab pad. Thank you so much, Chan Man. That is awesome. I'm looking forward to being at Edmonton Expo. It's gonna be fun. I'm looking forward to seeing you there.
I'm going to have so much new stuff at Edmonton Expo. All right. So I think that's that's enough on the gold for that little spot. I'll be doing more gold coins and stuff. So I guess since I'm using gold, I might as well just get all the gold done. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. All right, teeny water break. And I do have my water here, so it's not like I have to go. I'm just thirsty. Sure is, it's gonna be so much fun. to help if you're able to learn anything from my winging it that is so awesome yay if you have any questions at any time please feel free to ask me that's kind of why I'm here on twitch to hopefully whatever I've learned pay it forward show you guys anything that I can so yay thank you so much Woohoo! made my day Um, yes, uh, Yam Yamoza. Hello, welcome to the stream. Thank you for being here. And yes, I am using Copic markers. I love them. <laughs> All right, right now I'm using YR31. So some coins I drew in completely a lot of them is just kind of like yeah there's some texture of a uh, coin there or at least like some little lines to show that there's more coins personally i feel that coins and anything like that that's heavy detailed it's so easy to draw them all in and i think it can be a little much um so that's why i've just drawn a few coins and the rest is just kind of like yes the idea of more coins is there I'm hinting at them but I'm not drawing every single coin because it just it, it's over detailed a little bit or it can look a little a little heavy or like you didn't know where to stop um, and I'm not saying that how I did it is perfect or anything like that but I think it helps to not go too far on the detail. It's not important, it isn't necessary. My job here was not to draw a bag of coins. It was, Black Cat was literally all I was commissioned to do. The rest is just me adding on in because I got inspired. <laughs> um, I do have prints on my website. Thank you, Steve. Oh, thank you so much, Gary. I do have international shipping, um, but yes, to India it may be somewhat costly. I've created a monster. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Van, if you're not on Boop Squad, by all means feel free to join it because we would like to see. Um, we would like to see your work and then I, then I can actually see what you're doing. So please join Boop. All right, here we go. Um, let me put a link to Boop. Boop Squad. Yay. No, oh, thank you so much, Yamoza. I hope I'm pronouncing your name correctly.
anyone, if I pronounce your name incorrectly or just do an absolutely botched up awful job of reading your, your Twitch handle, I'm super sorry. I'm kind of half concentrating on art and, you know, probably my, my skill of reading takes a nosedive right now. No, I didn't see that, Wayne. Oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, okay, is it Zyra? Because there was a Zyra at, um, on uh, one of the other pages. Oh, Zara like the brand. Okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Simone, it took me so long to get that uh, screen grab from the from the trailer. I like I like kept trying to get it. Oh my goodness, it took me forever. <laughs> Thank you, Simone. I know I saw your work on there. It's awesome that you joined. Yay! Hello, kittens like waffles. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, Simone. I'm so glad you think so. It's just a spot for everybody that, you know, asks me if they can post, uh, they can show me their work. It's a way that I can I can see it without like missing messages and stuff. And um, it's just a place, even just for people who aren't yet comfortable um, posting their art on an art page, for instance, it's like a little way to ease them into it or just anything to like support the art. The frying pan is here, hello. You can show me your work, but do it on the Boop Squad page. That's what it's set up for. I try to check it at least once or twice a day. Uh, and if I have any comments, I'll post it there, but then you can get a lot of feedback from everyone else on the page. We have artists, writers, um, art enthusiasts, people who just love the art culture or uh, fandoms and so as such you're going to get a wide range of input and we try to make sure that everything stays positive granted everyone is human everyone has a bad day but still we try to keep everything as positive as possible and just encouraging and all of that so by all means please feel free to join boop squad and steve has put the boop squad link right there <laughs> And since Boop Squad is um, a group off of my art page, if you haven't liked my art page, I know this is a shameless pitch, but if you haven't liked my art page, I really do appreciate you being there if you feel like it. <laughs> Have fun drawing, Louie. Oh, yay, I'm glad you joined the frying pan. Yeah, that's a shame. Getting trolled is such a bummer. All right, so I'm going to keep my coloring of these coins. I'm going to also be careful with. I don't want to nosedive into coloring them like a crazy person.
That's awesome, Van. Woohoo! Um, I, m there's a me and another girl, Kara. She's she helps me moderate the page just to accept uh, people's uh, requests to join. I don't know that that I can even make it an open group. I think it's just one of those things. But she's really fast at answering them. Or um, if she's not around, I'll try to get to it as soon as I'm done with the stream. And I really hope you enjoy being on the group. Please post your art. You can never post too many times. Just enjoy posting in there. Comment on other people's work. You know, let's keep the community happy and all those good things. appreciate it. Our page is how I found Twitch. <laughs> yeah, for sure, Kevin. Oh, you thought it was Boob Squad? No, Boop. B-O-O-P. <laughs> Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Chan Man. That's awesome. <laughs> I so appreciate all of you who have followed me here. You're amazing. And I hope you find that, that Twitch does offer um, stuff that Facebook Lives I really wasn't able to do. I feel like the quality of the upload is better. Um, the fact that I can talk to you guys, though I don't know if you want to see my, my mug the entire time. But anyway, the, the upload is better. Um, I'm not having phone overheating problems. <laughs> I can see your comments better this way. So for me, it's just a much more art friendly um, streaming process than say Facebook Live. Though nothing against Facebook Live, it's awesome. And I will continue to do it when I'm traveling. Uh, so like from hotel rooms and when I'm on the road uh, for conventions, I'll continue to do Facebook Live. Yeah, it's much better streaming. <laughs> yeah, once I realized I was breaking the rules. <laughs> Have fun, Tom. Good night. Oh, good. I'm glad that a lot of you guys like uh, Twitch. It's worked a lot better for me, too. For a while there, um, my phone kept overheating when I would try to do a Facebook Live. What's Facebook Live? It's a, it's the same kind of streaming thing. You can just do a, a video upload uh, to Facebook as opposed to Twitch. No, oh, thank you, Chan Man. 
Uh, I, <laughs> I match her. I'm not using a uh, phone for this, but I use an iPhone personally. Right, I remember that, that you're the one who got the 130 markers. Oh, wow. He does shoes in Copic and is sponsored by them. I didn't think Copic sponsored anybody. Yeah, well, one time I had to run my phone downstairs, put it in the fridge, and wait for a few minutes before I could come back onto Facebook Live. I don't know if any of you were there for that one. Oh, do you want me to turn down the music? I totally can. If it's bothering you guys, it can be gone. I just turned it down. Hey. <laughs> For a while, everyone was telling me to try to get some music or suggesting that I try, and then I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't know that. I'm sorry, I match her. No, I don't actually, I can't hear the music, so if it is loud, I'll need you guys to tell me. Yeah, I didn't think Copic sponsored anybody either. Steve, I've just never heard of anyone being sponsored by Copic Markers. and then I'm done with it. <laughs>
that's so awesome, Chan Man. You missed the poop squad. <laughs> you mean the boop squad? Now I'm just blending out um, the darker color that I used. So um, for anyone who's been on my streams before, I'm sure you've heard me explain this a million times, but the way that I work with Copic marker, generally I have three tones that I work with to get a range of shade from, you know, highlight, midtone, shade or shadow. Um, and so for gold, I'm using these three. Hopefully you guys can see that move up a little bit so you can see it so I started with this one then I add some shadow with this one I go back to the lighter one to um, blend it in so like you always put the darker tone and then use the lighter one again to blend the edges back out so it helps to soften that darker tone if that makes sense So I'm using the lightest color that I started with to blend out the pumpkin spice color I like so much. <laughs> All right, now I'm using the very darkest brown that I use for um, gold. It's H23. So I'm gonna put H23 in a few of the darkest shadowy areas, like back here where the, the little money bag would be creating a shadow on the coins. Um, and then I'll go back and use my pumpkin spice color. I just call it that, that's not what it's called, um, to blend out the edges and soften them. Hey, Lino. Jeff Comic is here. Hello. 
<laughs> pumpkin spice. And which one were you using before? What's the Lionel Gold? Is that is that a color? So now I'm going back in with pumpkin spice to blend the edges of the darker brown. Let's work on her chest because that is definitely a need to get done. I'm just taking the very lightest yellow I use to soften up some of the transitions to white. There we go. Oh, interesting. I don't think I have that one. Let me check. No, I don't have that one. I'm going to have to look it up. Ooh, more colors. <laughs> yeah, she does. It's because I haven't finished her skin. So let's get that finished. It's about time. All right, so um, I do have some colors that I want to test out because I've found a couple more that I want to use for skin tones. But for now, um, I'm going to stick to the ones that I usually use just to be safe. Um, I don't really want to test it out, test out some new colors I'm thinking about on someone's commission. Um, I should test that out on my own time. <laughs> so um, I'm using my same colors and I always use E this away so you guys can see it a little bit. I start with YR and four zeros, and then E41, 42, and 43. So these are the, the main colors that I use for skin tones currently. Um, so I'm going to work on her, ah, sorry. I'm gonna work on her, her chest now. Fun, fun. Yeah, well, you know, I want to try, those are the ones that I'm going to try, um, Van, is I want to try the 50, 51 and 53 as well. Yeah, those are the ones that I just bought, but I haven't used them yet, so that's why I'm going to, I'm going to be trying the colors you use, and you're going to be trying the colors I use. <laughs> Switch. Oh, thank you so much. I'm glad you like it, Sig Neutron. Is that what it is? The fluorescent green is like impossible to read. All right, so I am using a base tone. It's very, very light. And I'm filling in all of her skin with this color. It works as a really nice base tone for the 40 colors that I use to go on top of. So because this is a pretty large area that I need to get filled up, I'm not going to look up for the next couple minutes. I hope that's okay with everybody. But I need to get this done without um, letting it dry. And for those of you who are used to working with Copic markers, 
you're probably very well aware that letting your Copic marker dry on the paper and then trying to add more color to it is like the kiss of death. So I'm gonna stay looking down, enjoy chatting amongst yourselves. Thank you all so much for your kind comments. I'll go back and read them in just a minute. I just need to make sure that this does not dry without being completed. And as always, for those of you who are new to my streams, welcome. I'm so glad that you could make it. And I um, always very strongly recommend that you have a dab pad or some kind of napkin, which is what I'm using right here, to dab off any excess color that the marker may have. They tend to uh, be easily overfilled, which is what I do. I have a very bad habit of overfilling my markers and then I have a very unhappy situation where a giant glob just blops onto the page and you have generally a destroyed picture. So um, I have these napkins that I found. You can use paper towels, just use something that doesn't, um, that doesn't leave a bunch of um, lint on your uh, marker and just have it there to dab off any excess ink that might be wanting to drip onto your character because that is the worst. It's happened to me before where a giant dark color just drips right on the face of a character and you have to just throw it away and start over. So it's one of those do everything you can to avoid that scenario and it's very cheap and easy to have a dab pad. So I can't recommend it highly enough. Oh shoot. Well, I just had a little unfortunate thing happen. So I'm gonna have to blend that in. Time to fix a problem. Something got on my marker, and I'm going to need to add a hair strand or something to fix that. But that's an easy fix. So in this situation where something got on the nib of my marker and it streaked right there, so a dirty nib is also no fun, um, when you run into a situation like that, so um, that's an easy fix because I can do another strand like this going down onto her hair right there. So I will show you guys how to fix a situation like that. Yeah, it sucks. It definitely sucks, but these things happen. And in a situation like this, it can be fixed. I mean, it's not gonna be exactly how you had it planned, but you know, shit happens and so the main thing to do is restrain yourself from picking up your work and throwing it across the room which is generally what you feel like doing in that moment um resist that temptation not worth it it's always a way you can fix a little mistake like that and in this case something got on the nib of my marker so i'll fix it and I'll show you guys how. All right, and right here, I need to do um, a shadow under her chin. I'm using E43.
Okay. So, oops, little shadow under the boobs. He would have been breathing through a paper bag. <laughs> yes. Kylie, but the nib of one of my markers, my skin tones had a little bit of like a dark, a dark color on it. So there's a slight smudge in the, in the art right there. So I'm going to extend her bang flip of hair right there. Um, and it's an easy fix. It can happen. Um, so in some ways it's good that like I screw up on some of these things so you guys could see how we fix it. And so I'm going to work on fixing that because stuff like that happens, you know, you end up with a little, you're dealing with art supplies. You, you end up with a mess somewhere. So this one is going to be uh, a not the end of the world fix. And honestly, it happens a lot where like, you know, something spills, something got somewhere you didn't want it to go. <laughs> so thankfully, this one can be fixed without too much uh, change to the art. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to let it dry for a few minutes and then I'll pencil in another little strand of hair to just cover that up real quick. <laughs> You'd have had a breakdown and then messaged me. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The, the best thing you can do is restrain yourself from taking the art and throwing it across the room because most things can be fixed. What I was talking to you guys about with a big glob of of ink falling on your paper that has happened to me and sometimes those ones can't be fixed but with most cases in art there's something you can do there's always something you can do so just don't take your paper and tear it that you can't fix you know you can't be like oh here i i threw a fit so i threw i tore your art in half but look i taped it together again like you know what are you supposed to do there <laughs> so yeah Never just take your art and tear it in half, please. <laughs> As you guys have seen, I've accidentally dipped my, my pen in um, um, my, you know, coffee and painted with that. I mean, you know, it happens. <laughs> It's still a little damp, so I'm just, I'm not gonna brush situ the situation. I'm gonna wait and let it um, keep drying a little bit. Will I have the, yes, I will. <laughs> uh, sorry, I didn't say who I was answering. Devin, yes, I will. Okay, so while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna get my trusty, 0 0.9 um, mechanical pencil. I use this one for shading usually. I'm not a huge graphite normal pencil person. Uh, I use it for remarks only because it's a little thicker and it won't dig into the pen. That's just personal preference. I mean, dig into the paper. But I'm just going to work on this little bit, which needs to happen. Oh, thank you so much, Signutron. Oh, wait, I was using T9 for this one. T6, T8, where's T9? Here we go. Her boobs look great. Thank you. This marker makes me so nervous. The last thing I want is for this one to get on something. Because if you get this one on somewhere, I just, I wouldn't even know what to tell you. 
<laughs> as far as how to fix that. Very careful. take me uh, you know I really haven't timed something like this this one I have been working on for quite a while but just you know for the twitch streams an hour or two but you know what Copic marker takes a long time to blend if I had a full day to dedicate to this it would probably take me a full day oh you are so amazing Devin thank you so much <laughs> you are so awesome Am I slipping some new artwork? You know, I really need to like get some more artwork for this. It's, it's on my to-do list, I promise. All right, now I just erase. That and You want to be stolen by that black cat? That's awesome. part on her hand has been bugging me. Oh really? I didn't know that about chameleon markers. Oh, that sounds really difficult, Kylie. beyond beyond nine something uh, I'm a full-time artist yes okay so I think that this is dry now and I'm gonna go ahead and fix that little curl right there <laughs>
I'm going to let it dry a little bit more. I'm starting to wonder if it's just completely fine. Okay. All right, so I'm going to let that dry some more, and I'm going to do some of the pink stuff because I'm excited about the pink stuff. And I'm going to add in some of the shadows on the um, skin here. Because this is casting some shadows want to give some depth to her outfit. Yeah, I might actually make it worse if I if I do um you can barely see it here. Almost you can see it more on screen. So I might just leave it. Um I'm going to I'm going to see a see if I can draw one in that looks better or literally I might just leave it be. Once I get the shading in and the shadows for um, the her like fur trim, you might not even see it. What happened? Yeah, it's pink stuff. <laughs> it's true, he would have. No worries, it's all good. From here, the cat's face looks the same as all of the rest of them. It could be where... Maybe I could go a little darker on it, but it's almost the same as all the rest of them. It could just be like that there's a light making a glare, but you know, it's it's no problem. I can I can add more if it looks odd. Okay, well, you know what? I am very tempted to just not mess with her chest. I could probably even fix it with a little bit of colored pencil as opposed to mucking about with her hair because yes, I could co cover it with hair and it would be no problem, um, but I'm kind of inclined to not because it will throw off the, the, the flow of just having you know one side with a long one one side with a short one and I kind of don't want to change that so I'm gonna cover it 
with a little tiny dab of colored pencil and none will be the wiser. Since thankfully I do have a colored pencil that is about the same color as the skin tone I use. Whoop, 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 whoop. I can fix I can fix it up too. I'll um I'll fix those. Well, one person was saying it was too loud, Devin. <laughs> Would you like me to turn it up a little bit? There we go. All right. I think that the thingy around her neck is, um, I think it's just kind of like white or a little bit blue or something. I'm gonna see if I can find a version that has. No, I don't have any more black cat. Hi, Angel! All right, I'm just checking exactly to be sure what color the little pendant thingy is. I think it's basically like supposed to be silvery white. Yeah. All right. Back to the art. Sorry, Devin. Where are my cool gray markers? Okay, here we go. Sorry, Kylie. All right, have a good one, Ben. Thanks for hanging out. All right, so now that pendant needs a little bit more of a shadow underneath it so that it doesn't look like um, it's a sticker. So I'm going to add a little bit more shadow. There we go. Okay, her skin is done. Um, I'm gonna do some more uh, work on the cats. I'd like to have a green um, color here. So this one will be green with gold and maybe the other one will be blue again or green again. I haven't quite decided, but I like the, the green. I think it's very Egyptian and works for me. While I'm at it, I'll probably fill in the, um, the rest of the cat's eyes. Red. <laughs> Perhaps. Boy, I make such a mess. I have Copics just everywhere. What a disaster. All right, I'm putting some of these away because I literally can't function with this much stuff around. Uh, yes, Angel, I drew this. Okay, um... I just don't want to introduce too many more colors. That's the thing. 
I'm already skirting the the edge of making it too many as it is. Thank you, Louie. Oh, True Deadman is here. Hello. All right, let's get a little more gold going on here. that there are any restrictions do you mean like age restrictions yeah exactly not pornographic or of course anything that is you know harm you know harmful to anyone and stuff like that yeah not offensive just be nice on boot page that's right Uh, graphic. Something's wrong with my gold pen. having some trouble with my gold pen that makes me super sad so I'm just gonna move right along Yeah, right? We sure do. Okay. Um, don't throw my pen against the wall. Yeah, I kind of feel like it. At least my gold jelly roll pen worked for this part. Could just be that it's just way too hot today. All right, I'm using this one for the diamonds because this is literally my favorite pink marker that I have.
Don't do what? <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Juan. <laughs> um I don't know how much like oh this had this many gold coins definitely not Juan <laughs> no I am not that expensive So Devin, if you're still here, this was the kind of pink that I was planning to do behind her. Going extremely dark, dark pink is going to be really, really difficult. So I kind of wasn't planning to do that dark. It was more along the lighter, dusty rose pink. I hope that's all right. <laughs> Because filling that much space with a really, really dark color is very difficult with Copic marker. It just adds hours of work. Thank you, Louie. That's so nice of you. All right. So now um, I would like to work on the diamonds, and they're going to be fun. Now, exactly what color to do them. I'm going to make them actually less of a gray color and more uh, blue. So I'm, I've been on the fence about doing the, like, uh, cool grays, or actually, um, or actually doing a actual bluish tone. So I'm going to go with an actual bluish tone. Not a ton, just super, super light. So I'm doing um, B, it's called Pale Celestine. And I think that is the lightest one I have. So let's see how this looks. Mm 
Yeah, I like ice. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, Devin. I just didn't want to um, make you feel like I hadn't listened to you at all. I'm kind of just doing a little like um, dot style uh, coloring of the uh, the diamonds because I don't want to fill in everything for the most part wherever it catches the light would go completely shiny um, so this is just to allude to some shadow in the diamonds just keep it minimal Oh, see you later, Hans. Have a good one. Oh, thank you, Louie. It's such a light, light blue. It's having a hard time showing up on, uh, on the screen. So I apologize to you guys for that one, but it will, it will show up shortly once I start putting in some, some darker blue. And for that, I will use the cold gray tones probably, um, because I don't want to go any more saturated blue than I am right now. This is about as much saturation as a diamond would have. At least, you know, if we're going with white diamonds right here. I went nuts on these big pink ones because it's just too much fun. But in general, I'm sticking with your average white, white diamonds. It's the new top Kickstarter. That's amazing. Oh my God. They're so badass. see. Oh, it's coming through enough? Okay, awesome.
is an interesting one. I don't even know if I've ever, I've ever used. Okay, it might be too blue. Thank you, Kylie. All right, so now I am, took me a minute to find the right color, but I'm using cool gray now. So it's, uh, it's a gray, gray color with an, a bluish undertone for anyone who doesn't have these ones. And I'm using it for the shadowing of the diamonds because in order to make them look like they're popping and sparkling in places, it needs to have something for the white to uh, be glowing out from, as it were. So um, I didn't want to add in any more bright blue colors. I tried in a few places uh, to do some tests and I didn't think it looked right. So I think now going gray is best. So it's just a very uh, simple hint of color for the diamonds. And I'm gonna do your your basic burlap bag for the um, the little money bags that are stuck in the diamonds. Oh, coloring with Copics is so much fun. Hey, Firebird is here. It's been a while since you've made it. I hope all is well. I agree, Kevin. That's uh, definitely how I started to start with the gray sets and move out from there. I've pretty much added my colors just one or two or not very many at a time to where I have my collection now. They're expensive. In my opinion, they're worth it. Um, because once you buy them, you can always uh, refill them, change out the nibs. There's a lot you can do to make them last, uh, but still, it's expensive, so make sure they're something you're gonna use. They are. Oh, I'm glad everything's going well, Firebird. All right, so now I'm going with a much darker um, cool gray. 
to just get some of the, the actual shadow parts where her body would be casting a shadow or um, the fur trim is casting shadows. Just anywhere like that. I want to be um, as bold as is necessary with the shadows so that I can really put those bright uh, shines on the diamonds. Because that is the part I'm going to look forward to. Yep, that's right. It looks like you all have it really well under control as far as your Copic purchasing and when you order more, and that's awesome. So I'm kind of just scribbling with the Copic marker right now. Right here all is in behind that the cat's little leg coming out. So I want there to be really nice and dark. Oh, okay, that's interesting. See you later, Tannis. Thank you. Yeah, and then switching to digital coloring when you're used to Copic Barker is a whole different story, too. You have to get into and used to using the digital medium. So that's, I, I admire you for that, Kevin. That's got to be tough. Thank you, Timmers. Okay, doing another little blend out. Now let's try my plan with the little diamonds. white works to make some extra shine. Make sure it's dry. Hmm. 
Well, it definitely shows up on the cat. Yes, it is getting close to dinner time for me. But she is almost finished. This is amazing. I'm so happy I'm almost done. Because I need to be done by tonight. I'll see when it's dinner time. Okay. No eat, only art. True. <laughs> yes, it stays, um, it stays bright here um, quite late, though it is getting darker earlier as we move out of summertime and into fall. All right, so all the little sparkles do really work, but you kind of have to see them up close. So um, you won't really probably see them on screen. <laughs> you wanted to see me do the background? Like the pink in the back? Yeah, it is, it's intense here right now. Okay, well I can do the pink in the back and then honestly it's just the last few little details and then it's finished. So let's do that. So um, I wanna use the same pinks that I have here in represented in the diamonds. So um, I'm gonna start with the lightest color which is RV10. And then I'm gonna use R81 and R83. So, time to get started. I don't wanna make it pink all the way to the edges. Honestly, I just wanna make like a little pink outline around her more than anything else. Also, it'll help her, um, in my opinion, it's gonna help her white hair pop a little bit more as well. Because, you know, right now there's nothing for the hair to really play off of, in my opinion. It works. I just wanted to make sure that these two pinks work well together. Oh, thank you, Bedlam. You know, I'm trying to maybe see if I can go a little lighter. And not quite so bright pink. Yeah, that's a little bit more of a dusty pink. That's a little more what I was going for, I think.
So I decided to use the triple zero. So technically it's in the purple family, but it's way more of like a dusty rose color than anything else. And then from this one, I'll go into R81, which is also kind of in the dusty rose family. Um, the other color I was using is just a little too psychedelic pink for me. Oh, you've got to go. All right. <laughs> See you later, Juan. All right, now I'm going to add in R81. Thank you so much, Devin. Day made. Yay. That means a ton. Thank you, Kylie. So I might make it like a little bit darker towards the bottom ring and then go lighter up to the top because then I can, I can show some of the shiny um, diamonds all along the edges and stuff like that. So these aren't exactly the right colors for each other. I am sort of jumping over a few little uh, color boundaries here. Um, and so I just need to do a few little uh, extra blends between the two of them to try to make it work a little bit. So I really do like the combination of these two colors. I think they look really nicely together. It's just it's not quite a perfect blend into one another. But if you kind of go back and forth and layer between the two, it generally seems to work and you can kind of fudge it. <laughs> 
All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, leave it at this and I'll just finish the pink on the other side because uh, my family is having dinner downstairs and so I would, I'd like to join them for dinner. Um, but I will post the final of this probably tomorrow since I'm shooting to be done with it tonight. Um, so I'll show you guys the final product tomorrow. And it was so fun to hang out with all of you again. Thanks to everyone who said such kind things. Thank you for your suggestions. Um, and for those of you who have um, started drawing again or are, are learning things from here, thank you for all of that. It means a ton. I love you all, bunches and bunches. And thank you again for hanging out with me on the stream. I hope you have a wonderful night. And I will see you all again, I guess, on Friday for another stream. So I love you guys. Bye.